subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Learn right now how to take stone coat epoxy countertops from shiny to low sheen. We're going to show you in this video how we took a white countertop and made it look like honed natural stone. We're also going to show you how we did our LED showpiece with a rock face edge and gave it a matte finish. These techniques are simple, they're easy to follow, and this is a blast. You're going to learn right now how to take your project to the next level by giving it any sheen you prefer. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Why did we make this video? Well, the other day on our YouTube channel, we got a question in the comments. How do I do a lower sheen finish? I don't like the shiny finish. Well, a lot of colors look better with a matte finish. So that's why we made the video. So keep your questions coming, keep your comments coming, and let us know in the comments, what do you want to see next from Stone Coat Countertops? All right, what we're going to do is take this piece and give it a matte honed finish. I'm going to do a lower sheen. I'm also going to do this rock face edge in a lower sheen, but my sandpaper isn't the right tool for that because it has high and low points. We're going to use steel wool or synthetic steel wool. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is remove the drips on the underside, then I'll flip it over and sand it. I'm going to use my 50 grit metal sanding disc to sand these drips off and then I'm going to flip it over and do a honed finish. I'm going to go through my different grits starting at 220 grit and I'll probably stop at 1000 grit. That'll give me a beautiful sheen and it'll feel like glass but it won't be really shiny. It'll give us that honed natural look. When I'm doing these projects for customers, I like to take a sample board. I'll put a piece of tape right across the center. I'll matte finish half of it and I'll leave the other half untouched so they can see the difference. This gives them a good idea and educates them on what sheen level that they want. It's a great tool to show your customers their finished outlook. I'm just going to shim it up. What we're also going to do is put an LED strip light under this piece. So I think that matte finish will help hide the light, but when I set this on the cabinet, I'm going to adjust the light before I give it its permanent home. That way I don't see the strip, but I get the ambient light coming through. I think this will be a nice touch for the showroom and for the home shows when people are walking by, they'll want to know how this rock is lit up, and I think it'll be a good showstopper. I'm going to use a 5 inch random orbital sander. I'm just going to start with our sanding kit, and I'll start low and I'll work my way on up. Anywhere there's a low point, you're going to see a little dot. When you're doing a hone finish and you start at 220, it's easy to get it perfectly flat where there's any imperfection because it'll show up shiny until you get it flat. Let's get it flat. The majority of your polish actually happens in the first grit. You're going to really get everything flat and perfect. After that, you're just bringing that sheen level up to your desired sheen and you're good to go. Make sure you blow the dust off and clean it so you can get an accurate view of what it'll look like. It'll appear more matte finish until you get that dust off. Pro tip. I'm just going to go through my consecutive grits now. I'm probably going to stop at 1000 grit and that's usually where I like my honed finish. I'm also going to sand in two directions. I'll go horizontal and then vertical creating figure eights as I do it. This gives me the best outcome with a random orbital sander. You don't see sanding marks when you do this method and it comes out fantastic. I really like these Aberlon discs that we sell with our polishing kit. They're made to sand bowling balls. Epoxy makes bowling balls, so they work really well. I stopped at 2000 grit. I think this is a really nice shine level. Now I'm going to work on those front edges to match them to the top, and then we'll clean it all off and see what it looks like. Here we go. Last pass. All right, so I got synthetic steel wool here. 
Let's try that out right now. Let's try the maroon scotch bright. All right, I got a maroon scotch bright pad and we're gonna see how that works on this shiny edge and see if it matches. Here we go. I actually really like that it's leaving some high and low points too. It's not getting in every crack and crevice and that actually looks really nice and it's giving it a really good match on that. Can you see that? See how it's like not getting in some of those holes, but then when you wipe that dust, it'll look, it'll look visually interesting. Guys, when you chisel granite, you actually get some shiny sections where it pops, it'll be dull and shiny. This looks pretty realistic. I'm loving this finish. Just try to keep that line feathered. This really gives me a chance to feel any sharp points too, which there really wasn't any, but if there was, this is the time to knock any of that down as well. You could rub your hand on this and it doesn't hurt at all. It's really smooth. It's almost therapeutic like a hand massage. Unintended consequence. Get a hand massage when you get new countertops. Oh, it feels so nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna hook my random orbital back up with the final pad and just go over this with that final 2000 grit pad. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna turn my speed down. That way I don't burn through anything. Look how good that looks. That is slick. Guys, another cool part about this piece, it's gonna live in our showroom. It's gonna go to home shows with us. And I purposely did a real rough rock edge, a lot of ins and outs on this side. If you come down here and look, it's a little bit more subtle. So I could ask the customer, do you like it more rough? Do you like it more subtle? Or do you want our round over finish in our other piece? This is a good technique to use. Make differences in one large piece and your customer will point you to the direction they wanna go. Another conversation starter that's really cool. When somebody's in your booth, you can say, hey, there's two seams in this countertop. I bet you can't tell me where they are. And then they really start to look and they're looking at your piece and they're going, holy cow, this is really cool. And you can't see the seams. That's a pro tip at a home show. All right, that 2000 grit worked really good. It blended this all in. I'm gonna use our liquid smooth. I'm gonna clean this off and let's go install it in the showroom. Liquid smooth. Okay, I'm gonna blow the dust off, clean it up. This first pass, I'm just getting the excess off and this is gonna help me wipe any residual dust off the piece and then I'll come back and dry it. The thing I like about this cleaner, it doesn't leave streak marks and stuff like that. Once it's dry, it won't change the sheen level, just cleans everything off and gives you a really nice, slick, smooth feel. Like the Karate Kid, man. Wax on, wax off. I love it. It's like opening a Christmas present. Every time you do this, it just, it changes the look of the piece, but I really think it made this one look quite natural. Guys, are you getting value out of this content? Give us a big old thumbs up below and help Stone Coat Countertops grow. Guys, you're gonna learn right now how to take the white countertops that you love and tone them down to a honed finish. This process is easy. Stay tuned, it changes the whole project. The first thing that I'm gonna do is the edges and the edges and inside rim of the sink. After that, I'm gonna hone the total surface. Because I'm gonna do these mainly by hand, I might get some surface scratches on top that are done by hand that aren't done with a random orbital sander. That's why it's key to do your faces and your undermount sinks first and then follow up with the surface. That's a pro tip. We're gonna create a lower sheen, a honed look, a matte finish. We're gonna start on the edges. I have pretty good edges already, so I don't need to remove a lot of meat. If I did need to remove a lot of imperfections from this edge, I could start with my random orbital sander at 220 grit at a lower speed. This would make sure that I don't burn through that edge and gives me better control on those vertical surfaces. Since I have a really good edge already, I'm gonna start with a maroon scotch bright. This will knock down the sheen for me relatively easily and very quickly, then I can get right to the surface. If you want a little bit higher shine, you can go with a gray scotch bright. And some folks like to use sanding sponges. These are a little bit more aggressive than our scotch brights, but they also do the trick. Let's get started. Boy, that really just takes that shine down quickly for me. 
and it's going to match the surface. Because I have a lot of experience in doing a low sheen finish, I know what I'm looking for for my final surface. And that's it. Boy, that feels great too. Just immediately makes it look like marble. We get a common question. How long should I wait before I sand my top? We say anywhere between three and five days, depending on how fast it's curing because of the ambient temperature. If it's hotter, you can do it quicker. If it's cooler, you need to wait a few more days. Guys, if you haven't seen the video on how we created this top, go check that out. We've linked it in the description and you can see how to create and mimic mother nature with your own Carrera marble. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with 220 grit and I'm gonna work my way up to 600 grit. I think I'll stop there, evaluate, see what it looks like, and I might be just happy at 600. Let's test it and I wanna know what you guys think. Did you like this top better before we honed it or after? Let us know in the comments below. All right, guys, time for the random orbital sander. I'm gonna test out some new sanding discs today. I've heard about these Abernet sanding discs. They're see-through. They have holes everywhere in the disc so the dust gets drawn no matter how you place them on your sander. I'm gonna see what the fuss is about and I'll let you know how well I like them. I've heard on the Stone Coat Countertop Insiders page from guys like Ryan Day that he loves these discs. Ryan, I'm giving them a test right now. Here we go. Check out the difference between 220 and that high gloss. This even looks like real marble right now, but check out those differences. Boy, that goes really fast and the pad doesn't clog up at all. I'm not leaving curly cues. I really like those Abernet discs. Sweet. Okay, we did 220. Now we're on to 320. Okay, I'm on the 400. Boy, these clean out really good too. 600 grit, I'll test that out. And I think we'll be done at 600. All right, let's clean this top off. We're gonna see what it looks like after I clean it and make sure those edges match the surface and we'll give it a final once over. Here we go. We're gonna finish up with our liquid smooth. I like our cleaner because it gives a slick, nice feel without adding any oily residue or a wax that makes it look too shiny. It doesn't change the sheen level, it just makes it feel slick as glass. All right, let's get started. I love our finished hone piece. I do, however, see a slight shine difference between the front edge and the surface. I'm gonna fix that right now using my random orbital sander. I'll turn the speed all the way to a one and I'm gonna go nice and slow. That's gonna get me that 600 grit that I finished with so that I get a perfect match. Let's do that right now. I'm just gonna do the edge and then come up over that surface. That's perfect, I can already tell. Super easy to do, that's why you don't start too aggressive. Always on your edges. Go with the least aggression that you need. I only needed 600, it feels perfect, it looks perfect, and now it's a perfect match. All right, we gotta do the same thing to the backsplash now. I got a confession to make. I only started with 600 grit. I didn't go through all the pads. Why? I had a really flat surface to begin with. So I pushed a little bit harder. I probably added quite a bit of wear to this pad, but all I needed to finish was these backsplash with that pad. So I cheated a little bit. Always keep in mind, you may not need to start at 220 grit. Maybe you can start with a little bit finer grit and save yourself a little bit of time. That's what I did in this case and it paid off. Practice makes perfect and perfect practice makes a pretty good countertop. We got a great low shine honed matte look on this countertop. Let's recap how we did it. We started with the edges. We used maroon scotch bright pad on that and that gave us a nice shine. Then we went to the surface. We used the Abernet five inch discs for our random orbital sander. Our grits were 220 grit, 320, 400 and we finished with 600. Realized after we finished the surface that the edges 
and the surface weren't a perfect match. So I turned my sander all the way to a one speed and then I just feathered that look in with that final 600 grit pad. What's the pro tip found in that process? Don't over sand your edges. You can always come back to them and feather that shine to make it a perfect match. We finished with our cleaner that gave it a slick as smooth feel. We finished the backsplash and this piece is ready to install. If you want to see how to install stone coat countertops, check out the next video. We're going to teach you everything that we do on site to give you a professional finish. Guys, until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you on the next video. Do you guys want to come feel this piece all, all matte finish? All finished? Yeah. Chris, you want to feel the matte finish? Yeah, the edge Ooh. looks sick too, dude. You like that? Yeah. yeah. That's super How'd you that? You like that, huh? You have to watch the video, you'll find out. Cool. Those discs are cool. Oh, that's getting electrifying. Doesn't it feel good? Yes, it does. All right, guys, let's go.